Can you help me appreciate the chairman of the meeting? And also the, the other executive, Benjamin, please help me appreciate him. He spoke so much. Um, also appreciate my, my uncle Jonah. I have known him for the past more than 10 years now. And I've tried it very hard to work by his name. With exhortation, then we pray. The major goal of what I'm just to talk about is how are we going to be united as a youth? The chairman has spoken a lot and also Benjamin has spoken a lot. If you have picked from the things he said, why they were talking, I was writing. Because the point they made is very powerful. The, there are many scriptures that connote unity. If you be studying scriptures, you realize that. But because of the want of time, I cannot be able to open most of those scriptures for us to be able to look at them. But if you want to actually take out time to study regarding unity, you can go through the book of Ephesians from chapter 4 from verse 1. You can also go to the book of Acts chapter 2 from 1. You can go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 10. You can go to John chapter 17 from 21. You can go to Colossians uh, from chapter 3 to verse 13. You can go to 1 Peter 3, 8. From, before I say anything, maybe we'll look at Act from 1. That's the only one I'll read and I'll just say the point and that's all. The Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. From this scripture, we, we are meant to understand that it is impossible for the Holy Spirit to come upon the face of the earth until they were united. That it's unity that was able to help facilitate the arrival of the Holy Spirit upon the believers. And we are conversant enough to understand that the Pentecostal experience is one of the pivotal moves in the body of Christ that advanced the, the body of Christ into a new avalanche of experience with God. Believers in themselves, we are called Christians in Antioch because of that experience. If that experience was not there, I don't know what we'll be called today. The origination and the origin of we being Christians was as a result of that encounter that happened in the upper room. And we're meant to understand that it was impossible for that to happen until they were united. That's to say that it's impossible for us to actually be able to make withdrawal from God if we are not united as a people. In that vein, how are we going to be able to promote unity in the church? Seriously speaking, I personally, I have been invited to many of these churches. It's I have met some people, they tell me that uh, Cherubim and Seraphim are not Christians. Now, I've met somebody like that. You know, and if, if Khan is not in place, do you know, there are people that will have this sentiment towards other uh, churches. And that's the truth. And do you know, they look at you as if you two don't even know what you are doing. And that's why they need for Khan in the body of Christ. I'm telling you the truth. So the truth is this. You must understand that we are just but a part of the body of Christ. And a part of anything is not the, is not the complete. Your eye is not alone. Your eye can't function without your brain. Your brain can't, your hand cannot function without your leg. I don't know whether you understand. It is good that you can actually do without a hand, without, but you'll be better a human being when those parts of the body are all together. So I believe that every arm of Christendom in denomination belongs to the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not complete without them. So you may not believe what they say. You may not have the same pattern of way of doing things, but that doesn't mean, mean they are not part of Christ. So that's why Khan is there to help us unite together and focus on the things that unite us rather than the things that divide us. Doctrines and all of those things will always, will always not be able to bring us into unity. I was discussing with one of my friends and I told him that no matter how we pray from heaven and earth, Catholic will never become Equa. Equa will never become Baptist. Baptist will never become Charity and Seraphim. Deeper life can never become redeemed. Whether you like it or not, if you visit each and every of this church, there are a lot of distinctive differences there. And do you know that God is there? I don't know how you get it. God is there. So it now makes us understand that God doesn't really actually really come to a place because our doctrines are right. God comes because the heart posture of people are right towards him. 
I don't know whether I get it now. So, in keeping to that regard, how then do we promote unity in the church? I'll just speak some of these few points, then we're done. Number one, we need to be able to avoid the gossip of each other and the assumptions of things that we are not sure about. A lot of people gossip all kinds of churches. Good as that may be, and try to defend your own church. You may actually be, be um, condemning the other church and making hurting the other church one way or the other. One of my friends went for service and there was no ERCC where he was. You know, me, I'm in Zaria. Do you know, it was just recently they brought a reverend to us in Zaria where we are staying. There was no ERCC reverend in Zaria. But there was Baptist. So all my mentality was that I won't attend Baptist because I'm an ERCC person. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So one of my friends went for service and there was no his local church there. He said he won't go to church. Why? Because there was no his local church and there are other churches there. And you know NYS. So it became somehow. And that guy remained there like that, not going to church, which was very bad. If he has an understanding of can, he will find a church there no matter how. And I tell you, it doesn't matter. You get what I'm saying now? So we must avoid some of these unnecessary assumptions and gossiping about other churches, especially on things you are not even sure about. Many people talk some things that they are not even sure about regarding other churches as though they are the ones that set in place. Another thing we must actually be able to do to promote unity is to learn to talk to each other. Learn to meet different people from different denominations. It's impossible for you to actually really understand how another church regulates themselves if you don't attend the church. If you don't go and sit in the church, relate to people within the church, fellowship with them, you may never be able to know how the church works. I remember one day I decided, I said, let me just go to Assemblies of God. Do you know I went there, I enjoyed the service that day. I, I enjoyed the service. Then I said, I went to Cardiff, I enjoyed it. So if you don't fellowship with them, you will not even really be able to if they even ask you where you come, you now announce that you are coming from so so church. They will be happy. I don't know whether I get now. I'm saying this speaking, we need to be able to take our time to fellowship with the other church if we must be able to foster the unity among ourselves. Then, we must also agree with each other on the things that unite us and not the things that divide us. For instance, when we sit down and begin to talk against the doctrine of this, the doctrine of that, somebody should be able to stand up and say, forget about all of those doctrines. What unites us? Jesus Christ. What unites us? The Holy Spirit. I think there are many few things that unite us together as Christians apart from the things that divide us. So we should learn to be able to agree on the that unite us rather than the things that divide us. Talk about the things that unite us, you will also be able to look at our pastors. I find it very hard sometimes. Somebody told me that the way Pentecostal pastor preach is different from the way our Orthodox pastor preach. I say, okay. And so, the truth is this. No matter how you try to make it, this guy can never become me. No matter how you do, you cannot become the, I can't become like chairman. No matter how I do. I don't know where I get it now. But does that now mean that because I'm not like chairman, I'm not a human being? I don't know where I get it now. So we must be able to ensure that, to know fully well that our pastors may not be able to preach alike. Our pastor may not be able to act alike. But all of them represent God in different quarters. And their communication of the word of God, their communication of the truth of God may be different. That's why we have plenty of apostles that Jesus Christ said. All of them are different. Paul was an apostle unto the Gentiles. Peter was an apostle unto the Jews. So they may be different, but all of them speak for God. Then, we must also learn to pray for each other. The chairman of the can spoke a lot about prayer. The truth is this. One of the easiest ways to be united is to pray for each other. If I pray for you, I will never gossip about you. Anytime I want to talk against you, I will pray for you. I told one guy, I think there was some guy, anytime he come to talk, he said, can we pray for the person? Let's say, for instance, somebody come to me to gossip about Kant Chama. As he's talking, do you know the Kant Chama? They saw Kant Chama with, I don't know whether your mom is her. They saw, okay, they saw Kant Chama with this lady and this lady said, can we pray for him? The person will run away. Tomorrow he come again. They saw Kant Chama stealing someone and say, can we pray for him? The person will run away. Because anytime you always insist that you pray for somebody, the person will run. Because the person looks for somebody that can support him in the ministry of trying to gossip or try to be able to foster the division. So we must learn to pray for each other if we must be united. First definition of unity as we've seen in the act of the apostle was them coming together to pray in one accord. So anytime you are, anytime you want to actually unite a people, you must learn to pray with each other. And that's why meeting such as this is very important. If all of us come, if actually we keep to the demand and we come together and pray together as a body, I'm telling you the devil will run away. 
The devil himself is always afraid of people that are united. And it is said that if people begin to be divided, the devil will leave them. They will know they will destroy them. And that's how it is. So we must be able to learn to pray for each other. Then, we must also be able to learn to tribute in helping each other. I have seen a lot of situations where people... Uh, was it somebody went to get an... I can't mention... I won't want to mention the church. He went to somewhere for an interview and they asked him which church are you attending. He called the church. He said, that means you are in my church. Okay, I'm giving you this thing. And that was a Christian. I was shocked and surprised. So you now realize that as in the body of Christ as Christians, we don't tend to help each other not having the understanding that we are can together. We are an association of Christians. Not necessarily that uh, because I'm not church, it doesn't know. We must learn to be able to help each other, contribute to each other to ensure that we come better as a people. So one of the easiest ways we can promote unity is when I see that you help somebody that is from Baptist and you are a ERC person. I don't know that you get it now. The last point I would raise is the benefit of unity. What would then happen if we are united? What are the few benefits of unity? If we are united as a people, one of the pivotal benefits is that we are going to grow faster. Every house truly functions by the grace that each joint supply. Whether you like it or not, when people are united together, they do things faster. Let me tell you, if only chairman will go to um, ERCC president today, eh, only on his own, he may not accept him. But if you come and the name of we are together, in fact, we agree, we even did a meeting. In fact, if he wanted to be faster, pack ourselves in like five bus and we go. Whether he's busy, he will come down and see us. If you carry like 200 you today and go to the house of the governor, the governor will come out. Why? When people are united, there is nothing they cannot do. They can they can easily achieve anything fast. With unity, you fast. If you want to raise, if you do you know if you want to raise hundred thousand today, it's one one thousand from hundred people. You alone bring you hundred thousand is hard. But when we are united, I assure you, you can do many things and even it do not feel as though we did it. I remember one of my friends, how did he bought he bought he buy bus for the you know him? That bus you saw. It's my friend that bought it. About how many million? The only thing he did, he was the state chairman, state SCCF chairman of the entire national state. So they went for the general corpus camp and everything, where every every copper in national state is present. He said, I just need some few coppers that can give out their one month allowance. We want to buy a bus. Do you know that at least out of those thousands of coppers, at least they were able to get sufficient numbers enough like not everybody will come out but because of the as much as they were they were able to raise millions there calculate that's 30 000, eh? by maybe let's say two thousand coppers that's how they bought a new bus they are building a new site and they will soon be done by the power of them being united no matter how you hammer it hammer it hammer it to the others it won't work but when they are all together when you bring it no matter how there are people that will put hand to do it so if we are united as a people the truth is this we are going to grow faster there is nothing we may actually intend to do that won't achieve the bible gave us that understanding of the world of battle that as they were they intend to do it because they are united god himself was afraid i said if god actually believed god and he would have dared those people those people will prove to him that he created them in his own image because they will actually ascend into heaven so that's to tell you that there is nothing that is possible except people are not I have just three more points. The other one is we must be able to avoid division, conflict, and separation. A man always says, United, we stand divided before. You must ensure that you avoid division. Division always starts, division does not start from people, it starts from one person. If you yourself do not agree on a matter, I assure you, when you come here, you will disagree with us. You can choose not to agree on something. Everybody agrees, they need some, some. Why? Because you are the division yourself. I get what I'm saying. We must always ensure. Learn to always know that you will not always be right. You must be able to agree certain times to the things that other people have said. Then, we must also be able to... Unity will also make us more efficient. What I mean by efficiency is this. The scripture says one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. You can do something alone very good, but when you are together, you do it better. In teamwork, one of the things that teamwork intend to achieve is faster for instance maybe you are supposed to build this thing alone somebody told me you can build a house in a day i wonder how is that possible it's possible if you can get people you will see see one month other people are doing this one other have doing another thing before you know it, they have finished it within one week somebody have went and built a story building it's possible 
when you gather a lot of people in Timor, they can achieve something that you will take 10 years, then they will do it within just some few few time. Okay. So if we are united truly, we will be more efficient. The last point I have here is that unity will always help us reveal the love of Christ to the world. The truth is this Christianity will never be attractive to people if we are not united. If a Muslim come here and discover that we fight in every meeting, how do you expect him to want to join the Christianity? When he discover that we fight every day, even in our meeting. So with unity, we can easily represent the love of God. Easily. I mean the Bible says, how would they know that you that uh, they are of my right? That when they see love among themselves, one of the genuine proof of unity is love. When you are united, you find it very easy to love each other. Okay. So we must be able to strive at all costs if we truly want to represent the body of Christ and represent and reveal the love of God to a dying world, we must be united. Unity is going to make us to achieve that faster. So can we just pray in one minute and ask the Lord and say, Father, as Khan, as the youth wing of Khan, as the, the association of all the youth who are Christian in this region, they will be united as a people. We will be united as a people. Whatsoever they intend to divide us, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Father, give us the strength to become one. 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 That we will not be divided among ourselves. Help us to embrace other churches. Help us to embrace other denominations. Help us to embrace others. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you.